Uh, once, many years ago, I was hiking along a trail deep in the mountains, and I came face to face with a wolf. He was all alone, and he looked like he had just had his ass kicked by the rest of the pack. He was skinny. You could see his ribs through the fur, and his fur was all matted up, and one of his ears looked like it had been bitten off. And he looked hungry. Uh, I stopped, looked at him, he looked at me, and then his lips pulled back, exposing a really impressive set of teeth. I had a, a walking stick on me, but it occurred to me that it would really only be useful to him to pick his teeth after he ate me. Um, but what's really interesting to me about this story is the thoughts that went through my head, as they always do in stressful situations. I, in, in my life, I've done a lot of stupid shit. And I've done stupid shit frequently enough that I've been able to kind of objectively study my thought processes. Uh, once I had a guy grab me from behind and pull me into a doorway in downtown Philly. And he was shirtless and he was standing behind me and he, holding a knife to my throat. And I remember thinking, he's wearing Menon's speed stick. So the most frightful place to be in a very dangerous situation is really inside my head. When my panic mode takes over from the usual voices that are in there, it can get weird. And weird, I know, is a relative term. So let me just say your mileage may vary. But I remember as I'm standing on the trail, watching this wolf ready for it to attack, I was experiencing the usual physiological changes that go on inside your body in a high stress situation. And I was thinking, maybe I should just wet myself. Just, you know, let go right there on the trail. That seems to impress dogs for some reason. Uh, maybe I could mark my territory down the front of my pants and the wolf would somehow obey dog laws and not eat me. But then another thought was that if it didn't work, I didn't want them to find my body and see that I had wet myself. At that point, I didn't know that when you die, you wet yourself, so it doesn't really matter. But I was pretty vain back then. Now, I, I, I probably wouldn't care. I'd probably just wet myself and try to see if it worked. Might do that now. Who knows? But another thought I had <laughs> was to bark at him. And maybe i get lucky and say something in dog that would scare him off. Or maybe over the years of listening to dogs bark, I may have picked up some lingo. Uh, somebody once said to me uh, when I lived in North Philly, if you get into a confrontation with someone, make them think you're crazier than they are. So maybe if I barked at the wolf and it didn't really mean anything in dog, it was just random dog bullshit, he might think I'm crazy and back off. One of the more unusual thoughts I had came because I had just seen a Meryl Streep movie. And for just the briefest second, I was going to yell at the wolf, Are you the dingo that ate my baby? Fortunately, my brain vetoed that. Now, you have to remember, this is all taking place in fractions of a second. It's just... Very, very fast, strange thoughts. But that was the point that the wolf took a step toward me and the shit got real. And that's when it, a memory happened. I, I, I thought of a man I had once met. He was a very happy man. He lived in a van, didn't have much, but he was always smiling. He 
had lots of friends, didn't really seem to have a care in the world. Obviously, he was insane, but stay with me. He once said to me, you can go through life treating everybody like they're your enemy, or you can treat everybody like they're your friend. And one of those will make you a happier person. So that went through my head as the wolf stepped toward me. <laughs> and I, I don't know if it was a conscious choice or just my last choice, but I looked at that wolf right in the eye and I said, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Are you a good boy? Yes, you're a good boy. And you know what? The wolf stopped and turned and ran the other way. True story, swear to God. Now, I don't know for sure if it was me choosing to greet that wolf as a friend and not an enemy, or if it were was the hunters just over the hill who had just started firing at some deer that made the difference on that day. Who can say? I probably never will. But I choose to believe in kindness first. And that is how I have treated every wolf I have ever met since.